This is the output layer of artificial neural networks that we use to classify, for example, photos. This is a gas in a container, and these are a bunch of dice rolling together. And guess what? They are all ruled by the same mathematics, multinomial probability. Probability is a way to measure the chance of something happening. For the dice, the chances are easy to calculate. Each number has an equal 1 in 6 chance of showing up. For the gas in a container, different energy states that the gas can take have different probabilities, and these probabilities vary as we change the temperature. In machine learning, the same idea helps computers make smart guesses. Let's say the computer is trying to figure out if a photo is a cat, a dog, or a bird. It doesn't know for sure, but it can calculate the probabilities for each category. If the computer finds that the chance of the image being a cat is 80%, a dog is 15%, and a bird is 5%, it will confidently say the image is most likely a cat. All these situations, rolling dice, gas in a container, and classifying photos are like different games but with the same rule. In other words, they have the same probability distribution, the multinomial probability function. In this video, I will first use various examples to cover the concepts of multinomial probabilities, classification in machine learning, and Boltzmann distribution describing the state of a gas in a container. I will also cover the history behind the multinomial distribution. After that, we will have practical coding examples to demonstrate multinomial probability computations and multinomial logistic regression that uses softmax for classification. And if you don't know softmax, no worries, we will have that covered in this video. Next, I will walk you through the mathematics of multinomial probability and show you how that can be converted into the softmax function for classification purposes and how it is equal to the Boltzmann distribution. Finally, at the end of the video, there will be a puzzle for you to win and optionally have your name and picture announced in the next video. Now let's see what a multi-class classification means in machine learning. Imagine you are taking pictures of animals in a park. You want your computer to look at each photo and tell you whether it shows a cat, a dog, or a bird. This is a problem called multi-class classification because the computer needs to choose from three possible answers. The tool that helps the computer make this decision is called softmax, a part of many machine learning algorithms. Softmax works by assigning probabilities to each possible category. I already mentioned the cat, dog, and bird example. Now let's think about one other example. Imagine your phone's keyboard suggesting words as you type. If you write, I want to eat, your phone might guess the next word could be pizza, pasta, or salad. Softmax helps the phone figure out the most likely word from many options. Another example is email spam detection. Your email provider needs to decide whether a new message is a spam, promotional, or a personal email. Using Softmax, the algorithm calculates probabilities for each category and chooses the one with the highest chance. Softmax also plays a role in medical diagnosis. For example, doctors may use an algorithm to help identify a disease from patient symptoms. If there are multiple possible conditions, the algorithm uses Softmax to decide which one fits best based on the data provided. Even self-driving cars rely on Softmax. The car's system looks at objects around it and needs to classify them as pedestrians, vehicles, or road signs. By calculating the possibilities for each category, Softmax helps the car make safe and accurate decisions. In all these examples, Softmax turns complicated problems with many choices into simple decisions by focusing on probabilities. Before I move on, let me introduce our High Ticket Bootcamp, a personalized, immersive program designed to transform you into a sought-after data scientist. With daily access to me, we'll build your online portfolio, master job-ready skills, and prepare for interviews. 
we have limited spots to ensure the quality. To apply, go to our website and fill out this form. Now that we observed how important probabilities are in machine learning, let's learn more about the probability function that rules the game of classification in machine learning. The multinomial distribution has a long history tied to the development of mathematical ideas. It began as an extension of the binomial distribution, which models situations with two possible outcomes, like flipping a coin. The binomial formula was first formalized by Jacob Bernoulli. Bernoulli's work laid the foundation for understanding probability as a branch of mathematics. The multinomial distribution was created to handle more complex cases where there are more than two possible outcomes, such as rolling a dice or sorting survey responses into several categories. This need became clear as scientists and mathematicians began working on real-world problems that couldn't be solved with the simpler binomial formula. Early thinkers like Pierre-Simon Laplace contributed to this development for expanding probability theory to include a wider range of applications such as astronomy and population studies. By the end of 19th and 20th century, the multinomial distribution has taken its modern form thanks to the work of scientists like Francis Galton and Carl Pearson. These researchers applied probability to fields like biology and social sciences, where data often involved categories with multiple outcomes. For example, in genetics, the multinomial distribution could predict how traits would be passed down in families, and in social sciences, it helped analyze survey data with multiple choice responses. Let's now see what multinomial distribution can do for us in terms of an example. Imagine you have a six-sided dice, and you throw it 100 times. Every time you will roll the dice, you see one of the six outcomes from 1 to 6. Now let's say you want to figure out the probability of getting a specific combination of outcomes. For example, you might wonder what are the chances of rolling the number 1 exactly 20 times, the number 2 exactly 15 times, and so on for the other numbers. This is the type of problem that multinomial probability can solve. Multinomial probability is a rule that tells us how likely it is to get a specific combination of outcomes when there are several categories and repeated trials. For dice, the categories are the six possible numbers, and the repeated trials are the 100 rolls. Now let's use the example of throwing the dice 100 times. If the dice is fair, each number has an equal chance of 1 over 6 of appearing on any roll. To find the probability of getting exactly 20 rolls of 1, 15 rolls of 2, and so on, the multinomial probability function combines these chances for all the outcomes. What makes this approach so powerful is that it doesn't just apply to dice. Multinomial probability is used in many real-world situations like predicting word frequencies in a book, determining voting results in an election, or analyzing DNA sequences. In all these cases, it helps us calculate the chance of a specific patterns happening. Before I move on, let me introduce Compufler's consulting services offering tailored data-driven solutions like predictive analysis, risk assessment, downtime forecasting, pipeline automation, and customer behavior insights. If interested, visit our website and fill out this form to get started. Earlier in the video, I mentioned rolling a dice 100 times has the same rule as a gas in a container. Before getting into the connection between the two, let me discuss the concepts in the latter example. Imagine a container filled with a gas. Inside, there are countless tiny particles moving and bouncing around at different speeds. Have you ever wondered what is the total energy of the gas? or how the energy of the gas changes as we heat or cool it? The answer lies in something called the Boltzmann distribution, which as we show later in the video can be derived out of the multinomial distribution. When discussing the mathematics later in this video, I will show you the link between the Boltzmann distribution, the softmax function, 
and the multinomial probability. But before that, let's first discuss the multi-option classification. In machine learning, a mathematical object called softmax mirrors the Boltzmann distribution in physics, having the same mathematical form and interpretation as Boltzmann distribution. Softmax helps neural networks and other machine learning classifiers decide if an image is a cat, dog, or a bird by looking at how they are distributed at different so-called energy levels. Softmax takes a row of our spreadsheet data or the output from the last hidden layer in a deep neural network and turns them into probabilities, one probability per class. These probabilities tell us how likely the image that we often use as an input into the neural nets belongs to each class, such as cat, dog, or bird. Here is how it works in our example. When the computer looks at an image, it analyzes the pixels, tiny dots of color that make up the picture. These pixels are the predictor variables, often labeled as X. The neural network will process these variables and assigns an energy value to each class, cat, dog, or bird. This energy is like the energy of the gas described by the Boltzmann distribution. The softmax function then comes into play. It uses these energy values to calculate probabilities, but here is the trick. Classes with lower energy get higher probabilities. This is because the Boltzmann-like formula of softmax naturally favors states or categories with the least energy, just like in physics. The class with the highest probability or equivalently the lowest energy becomes the computer's prediction. Depending on their pixel values, sometimes the dog has the lowest energy, sometimes the cat has the lowest energy, and sometimes the bird gets the lowest energy. Now that we have covered the concepts, let me show you how to practically perform some of the examples that we just discussed. This code uses the multinomial distribution from the SciPy stats library to calculate the probability of a specific outcome when rolling a fair six-sided dice 10 times. Let's break it down together. First, we define the parameters of the problem. This variable n represents the total number of rolls, which is set to 10, and p is the probability of each face of the dice appearing on any row. Since the dice is fair, the probabilities are evenly distributed, so each face has a probability of 1 over 6. Next, we define the specific outcome of rolling the dice 10 times. For example, if the rolls resulted in the numbers 1 through 6 appearing with the counts 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, this array represents how many times each face appeared during the 10 rolls. Before proceeding, the code checks that the sum of these counts equals the total number of rolls n, if not an error is raised, because the outcome wouldn't make sense otherwise. After validating this input, we calculate the probability of observing this particular outcome using the PMF or probability mass function of the multinomial distribution. The PMF takes three arguments, the array of outcome counts, the total number of trials n, and the probabilities p of each category. It computes the chance of this specific outcome occurring under the given conditions. Finally, the result is printed. For instance, the probability of observing this outcome when rolling a fair dice 10 times is displayed here. This probability quantifies how likely it is for this specific distribution of results to occur. Another example that we discussed in this video was classification in machine learning. Here is a sample code that does a multinomial logistic regression that uses the softmax probability function under the hood. This code demonstrates how to perform multinomial logistic regression using the scikit library in Python. First, a synthetic dataset is created using the make classification function. This dataset includes the 10 features, 5 of which are informative and 3 target classes. The dataset is then split into training and testing subsets using the train test split function to ensure the model is evaluated on data it hasn't seen during training. The logistic regression model is initialized with the multi-class equals multinomial parameter, which tells scikit-learn to use the multinomial approach rather than one versus rest for classification. 
the solver equals LBFGS parameter specifies the algorithm for minimizing the errors, the loss function, and max iter equals 1000 ensures the model has enough iterations to converge. Next, the model is trained using the fit method on the training data. Once trained, it predicts the target labels for the test data using the predict method. The model's performance is assessed by calculating its accuracy and generating a detailed classification report. These metrics help evaluate how well the model classifies unseen data. I won't go over this report in this video as it takes one entire video that I plan to make in the future. Now that we have covered the concepts through some examples and have seen how multinomial distribution and logistic regression work, let's now see the mathematics behind everything we have discussed so far. Let's start with the multinomial distribution. This is a conditional probability for y, which is a vector containing the frequency of the outcome of each category. For example, in the case of rolling dice 10 times, y1 is how many times number 1 was, the outcome, y2 is how many times number 2 was the outcome, etc. Theta1 is the probability of number 1 in one single roll of dice, and z is the normalization factor, making sure that the sum of all the possibilities is 1. We now use a trick. The exponential of the logarithm of anything is equal to itself, so we reformulate the probability in this form. Now, the logarithm of a few terms multiplied by each other is equal to the sum of the logarithm of each one of them. For classification in machine learning, we define a vector beta for each class and dot product it with the predictor columns of our spreadsheet and define that to be the logarithm of the probability of that class, which is theta. So after replacing the thetas, here is the probability. Note that in the matrix form, beta is a matrix with each row being the coefficient of one of the classes. Now let's define the y vectors in the following form, 1y per class. In each y vector, all the components are zero except one that is equal to unity. The location of this unity determines the class. For example, in the example of dog, cat, and bird, y1 refers to the dog, y2 to the cat, and y3 to the bird. To see how the Boltzmann distribution emerges out of this, we note that only one component in each y vector is non-zero, and we refer to that component by number i. In this case, it means each component of the y vector refers to one of the classes. When that component becomes one, that class is selected. With this convention, the probability for class i will look like this equation. And this is the softmax function and the partition function z is the sum of all the classes. Now if we define the energy of the system as minus the beta dot x, then this will be the Boltzmann distribution explaining physical systems like a gas in a container. And finally, here is the puzzle for you. The first person who gives the correct answer to this puzzle in the comments below will have the option of having his or her name and picture shown as the winner of this puzzle in the next video. Imagine you have a bag containing 30 candies of three different colors, red, blue, and green. The proportions of the candies are 40% red, 30% blue, and 30% green. You draw 15 candies randomly, and after each drawing, I will add an identical candy to the bag and shuffle. Now here is the question. What is the probability of drawing exactly 8 red candies, 3 blue candies, and 4 green candies? I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.